All right, so we're gonna go ahead and program these uh, controls right here. I previously said to remember this gray jumper wire off of the, the harness itself. This is the wire you use to reprogram the controls. There is a jumper cable, which is this white one that just goes to ground. I connected it up there. You just pretty much ground that gray wire to reprogram the controls. So first, what you gotta do is turn on the ignition switch, do not start. And then it says, uh, move the control lever knobs to the position shown. Okay, so we're gonna hit the ignition and then uh, we're gonna lower all three knobs or all three levers down. And then connect the white jumper wire to the gray program wire. Wait for the blower speed to change approximately five seconds. So let's do that. Turn the key. Oh, this thing's already blown. So switch is on, move the levers down. So let's move all three of them down. There they are all the way down, all three of them. So now we're gonna connect the jumper wire. Let me uh, put you down for a second. Okay, so to wait for five seconds. I don't know if y'all can hear me, that's blowing really loud. So now it says to uh, move the lever and knobs to the position shown. So we're gonna move them all the way up. Okay, everything turned off. So we moved them up. Uh, disconnect the white jumper wire from the gray program wire. The blower speed will change, indicating completion of the calibrated procedure. Okay, let me disconnect it. Or just cut on for a few seconds. It says, uh, confirm the proper operation of controls. Repeat procedure if necessary. When finished, tape over program wire connector with electrical tape to prevent accidental contact with the ground. That's it. So, according to this, this stuff should work. So, on the blower, the blower speed, move this over a little bit, this is the fan. So, this lever knob controls the blower speed on and off. I'm sorry, from off to high. So, let's try that. Let's go to the blower. So, right now it's off. That's on low. Uh, the further I put it down, it should go faster. Okay. Yeah, buddy. I need to some air. Check this other one. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that one works perfect. Let's put it on low. The next one is AC operation, the temperature. Okay, well, I don't have any Freon on this thing, so I can't check the temperature yet. But the temperature is from, I'm assuming from hot to cold right here. But I won't know that until I put Freon in this thing. And the last one here is the mode. So mode on here would be defrost on mine. So what that controls is the, what that controls is the dash defrost up here. And then you can switch it down to the floor or you can leave it in the middle and have a little bit of both. That's what the mode is for. And in this case, it would be the defrost. So right now, everything is blowing through the vents, through the side vents here and over there. And it would be blowing through this middle vent if I had it connected, but I haven't connected it yet. So let's see what the defrost does. Or the blend, I should say. Okay, so that's about midways. Something changed. 
Okay, so it's blowing on the floor right now. Put it a little further down. Okay, now it's switched up on top. And a little bit on the bottom. So let me push it all the way down and it should be completely defrosted. Yes, it is. Okay, so the defrost works well. And if you want to change the speed for the defrost, you just push this lever down. I'm sure y'all can hear that. So that's blowing all kinds of air. So let's lower it back down. Up. Man, that's pretty sweet. So all the way down on the mode is the defrost just for the top vent. And midways is a blend for the floor and the defrost. And then all the way up, or about right there is just the floor itself. Yeah, I can feel it down here. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. So the controls work. The only thing I have yet to confirm is the, the temperature. So it goes from hot to cold. I'm assuming it's hot there and once you push it in, it probably gets cold. But I won't know until I get some freon in this thing. But yeah, so far everything's working good. That was an actual first test of the evaporator and the fan and the controls. So you got a first look at it. It's pretty cool. I really like these controls. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be my setting always. Just, just to turn the system completely off, you just raise this lever all the way up. Yep, and the fan right there, so that's the off right there. Pretty cool, I'm really impressed with this stuff. So, now I have to wire up the fan and the trinary switch. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dash back together and I'll show you the glove box, in, glove box install. And uh, well, the dash, it just has one plug on it. So I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna secure that center vent. Okay, so I got my dash back on over here. Um, one thing you gotta take note of is um, before you put on the dash, there's these little factory clips that go all around right here under these uh, screws. On the inside, before you put the dash, this is what they look like. If you have them, don't lose them. Uh, the, these are not reproduced, so they go before the dash, just inserted. Uh, whenever you do the center vent dash, this one would obviously be on the other side. You have to take this off because it gets in the way of the vintage air vent, but you can still put a screw. So what I did is um, I drilled a tiny hole before the screw, and then I, I screwed it on to the vintage air um the AC duct, you can kind of see it in there. So it also dubs to keep the uh, the center vent secured. So you don't, you can keep, you can retain the screw and secure the vent on the inside. So if you have these, just save them. Like this one, I'm gonna save it because I remember I had to buy two or three of them. These are not reproduced, so take care of them. Don't break them when you take them off. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my glove box so before now. Before I put on the glove box, I forgot to show y'all. Um, this is a sticky tape. And it comes in the kit. This is what it looks like in the kit, as you can see. And it goes around this section line right here. All right, so let me put on my glove box now. Uh, this is what the vintage air glove box looks like. You can see it's kind of shallow. Uh, I had found this decal on uh, eBay. It's a factory decal for the 60s uh, Chevrolets with uh, AC. You can see the date there on the bottom. It reads uh, 52962. These were made for, I know for sure, 61 through 64. I don't know what other years. And it does go in the glove box. Um, it just coincidentally happened to be red. So I thought it was a pretty cool addition to the glove box. 
Uh, the way this secures, it just this secures. It has a, a hole here, a hole there, which is I got it back there. This one, and then on the opposite side, and then on the bottom, it has three three holes, and the factory glove box door secures secures it in right here. So you put in your glove box, secure the, scr the screws, and then you put on your door, and then the door secures the whole bottom piece of the glove box. So let me get this installed and I'll, and I'll bring you back. All right, got some glove box action. Insurance there, my registration. So you can see the screws right here. One, two, and the, the door itself secures it on the bottom. All right, so we're on the last part of the install here. Um, this is the setup I had originally in my car for one fan. This is the electric fan harness that I was using. Uh, it works great. It's really basic. It's a, I have a, it's actually a 60 amp relay and a 60 amp circuit breaker. So, but all I had was one fan that was cooling the engine. So now I added the second fan for the AC. And I just wanted to show you how I wired it to the trinary switch. So here's the second fan that I added. Here is the second relay that I added. And on the relay itself, I was able to use the same ignition wire. The battery went to a new circuit breaker, to a new battery. So I have two circuit breakers and two relays. And then uh, over here I have the, uh, the thermal switch, which is the last one. And I was able to loop the thermal switch to the same wire. So that was super easy because most of that was already wired. All right, so that's it for the second fan. Um, now for the trinary switch, uh, this is how it goes wired. This is the trinary switch here. Right here, it goes right on the dryer. And as you can see, it has four wires coming out. So before I took them away, I wanted to show you how it's wired. There's two blue wires, exact same color. And then there's two black wires with green stripes, exact same color. Okay, so this blue one off of the trinary switch goes to the thermal switch. And on this illustration, this is the thermal switch. So this is your trinary switch. So you got one blue wire that goes to a thermal switch. Everybody's thermal switch is probably gonna be in a different spot. Mine is right there on the water pump. And I have it routed, tucked all the way back in the engine and coming over here to the harness to my, uh, to my relay, my electric fan relays and now to the trinary switch. So one blue goes to the thermal switch. The other blue wire on the, on the trinary switch, it just goes to ground. You see? Ground. So I have mine directly grounded to the battery. All right, so the black and green, one of the black and green, either one, it doesn't matter, goes to the compressor clutch. So I routed mine. It's, it's gonna be tucked away down under here. I just left these out right now to show y'all. So it's, it's tucked away under there. It goes under my battery, under the battery box. It goes up this, behind this uh, line and it just goes to this wire right here. Super easy, All right? And the other black and green wire right here goes to the blue wire that comes off of the harness on the, um, the evaporator box. So if y'all remember, I had, on the harness back here, there was uh, two white wires, which are ground. There was one red wi wire that's power, and then it had a blue wire. So that blue wire, it goes to the compressor relay. So it, it goes to this black and green right here. So I got it right there. So real easy. Again, there's two blue wires and then two black wires with green stripes. One of the blue wires is ground. The other blue wire goes to the thermal switch. 
and then the, the two black wires, one goes to the compressor, and then the other black wire, the black and green, I should say, it goes to the uh, to the blue wire off of the off of the harness. So that's not bad at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this over this illustration so y'all can check it out. My ignition wire on the American Auto wire, it's, it's yellow. It, it's actually labeled for fan. So I have that fan wire to the two brown wires on the relays. So that's it for that. Um, I just gotta tuck away these wires and uh, put my air cleaner back on. Um, make sure all the AC lines are tight again, which I'm, I'm just gonna double check that they are tight. And, and that's it for the install. Everything else is done. This was the last piece that I needed. Uh, next, I'm just gonna fill it up with Freon and I hope there's no kind of leaks in the system. If there is, the only thing that would be leaking would be a, a, a faulty O-ring. So make sure y'all lube your O-rings and be careful when you install them, not to force them in or nothing. They go in super easy. As far as the install goes, it's 100% done. What's going on guys? Uh, so it's been about a week since I put the Freon on the car. Uh, today is July 10th. Um, I did it last Thursday. Uh, I drove down to my buddy's shop, Last Minute Customs in East Houston, where my buddy Mark uh, filled it up with Freon. Uh, the vacuum held for over an hour. So we had a really good sale on the whole AC system. It was a 20 minute ride from my house to Last Minute Customs. Uh, took the Beltway all the way over there. It was in the middle of the day. It was literally a hundred degrees just like it is right now. It's 100 degrees outside right now. And I was sweating over there, but the way back was a breeze. It was really cool, you know, to be pushing AC in this thing. I've personally never had AC in an old car. And man, it was it was a great feeling to know that this, the install was successful. There was no leaks in the system. Made it back nice and cool all the way home. So the AC, the AC vents, they blow about anywhere in between 50 and 60 degrees and that's with it being 100 degrees outside so i'm going to show you all the vents right here in a second i put a little thermometer in the center vent and uh, it's july 10th it is 100 degrees outside right now with the heat index is 105 and as you can see i have my windows up my shade is closed on my roof and uh it's it's nice and cool in here it's really comfortable I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Mark and Tim at Last Minute Customs on the east side of Houston. Uh, I've been shopping there for five years, six years. It's my favorite store in Houston. So these guys restore Impalas all day long. That's all they do. They specialize from, you know, 58 through whatever Impala. And um, this is where I've been buying my parts. Um, they've walked me through some installs. Uh, as some of y'all may know, it's kind of hard to find good people in the car world that will actually share some information with you but uh, fortunately I, I've been able to find some good people and I definitely recommend uh, Mark and Tim down at Last Minute Customs I'm gonna put their information here on the screen in a bit uh, really good people super humble and they know everything there is to know about an Impala they've been building these cars for many years and like I said they've they've shared a lot of information with me that's got me through my build. And um, I bought a lot of stuff from them. They have uh, an array of parts, a lot of parts that were hard to find for me. You know, I've been able to find them right here, local on the east side of Houston with uh, Last Minute Customs. So big shout out to them, Mark and Tim. Uh, I'd like to thank them. And uh, if y'all need any information or parts, I'm gonna put their information here on the screen. I really like the vintage air on, on, on this old car. I really so. like the vintage air on, on, on this old car. So. I really like the vintage air on, on this old car. So. I hope y'all enjoyed the install videos. They seem kind of long because I went into detail, more detail than what I probably needed to. But it should walk y'all through an install if y'all decide to do it yourself. So that's one thing I preach is try to do things yourself before you take it to somewhere else because you'll be surprised of, of what 
what you'll be able to do. I've never installed a vintage air kit. And uh, here we are sitting in this nice cool car right now. So I thank y'all for, for, for watching the videos. I really hope you enjoyed it. But most of all, I hope y'all learned something. So to the next one, thanks for watching.